South, high school and college football is a way of life. In fact, it's so big in some places that an NFL team would struggle to survive in those markets. But in the Northeast, it's a different story. The professional teams are embraced, sure, but on an amateur level, the sport is completely overlooked, with little attention paid even when one of the schools is doing well or has a potential Hall of Famer. In fact, if you combined every FBS school in New England, New York, and New Jersey, you would still have less teams than Florida or Texas have by themselves. Short of the Ivy League schools making the jump to the FBS level, it seemed the Northeast's best college football days faded away with Doug Flutie's Hail Mary pass. While Syracuse floundered, Rutgers did Rutgers thing, and Boston College's fans slowly outed themselves as Notre Dame fans who didn't want to leave home, an FCS school who has only had one head coach in its history and a stadium that holds less than 5,000 people was ready to make the jump to become the Northeast's new powerhouse. Unfortunately, that team was coming from New Jersey. Established in 1993, the Monmouth Hawks football team has performed relatively well during its first three decades. With seven conference championships, three playoff appearances, and a 570 winning percentage, they may not be an FCS powerhouse like North Dakota State, but they do have a much better color scheme. With the biggest market in the country at their disposal and no real competition for it, the Hawks had a mission to prove that the Northeast was ready to compete with anyone, and they could convince an entire region of the country to finally care about amateur football. And during an arms race that saw conferences expanding and FCS schools being called up in record numbers, Monmouth knew it was their time to strike. Unfortunately, most conferences weren't really interested in the small school from New York's younger sibling, but one was just desperate enough. Conference USA. After having the American Athletic Conference scoop up half their schools, CUSA only had five current members. Louisiana Tech, Mid-Tennessee State, UTEP, Western Kentucky, and their newest member, Liberty. Since they were already calling up three other FCS schools to join their ranks, they decided they might as well add a fourth who could join immediately. While, yes, this meant their closest conference foe was 393 miles away, the chance at having a game broadcast anywhere besides ESPN Plus made the decision to join pretty easy. Meanwhile, on Twitter, the social media manager for the Buffalo Bulls decided to poke fun at the Hawks, wondering if, like the professional New York Jets and Giants, they would be another New Jersey team trying to claim New York. The back and forth escalated throughout the spring, and by the summer when the schedules were announced, the line war had captivated both the MAC and CUSA, becoming the newest rivalry coming to your living room on a random Tuesday evening. Unfortunately, during the back and forth Twitter battles, the Hawks social media managers started tweeting directly at recruits who had committed to the Bulls, trying to sway them to come down to Jersey. This of course violated several recruiting rules, and because of that, Monmouth would be making their FBS debut with no scholarship players. The players who had been on scholarship all decided to transfer out leaving new head coach Joey Beans Jr. no other option but to hold open tryouts for the team. While most of the people showing up were barely capable of putting on the shoulder pads, Beans knew he only had to get through one season of this before he could feel the team of actual players. After a disastrous three days of tryouts and what coaches alleged were scrimmages, the roster was chosen by drawing names from a hat. His quarterback had a noodle arm and cinder block feet, his running back was 52 years old and had arthritis in his wrists. And his best wide receiver was 5'4". None of his offensive or defensive linemen cracked 220 pounds, and his kicker was legally blind. As Bon Jovi's slippery when wet blasted through the stadium speakers for the first official practice, the team knew their chances were also living on a prayer. But with hard work, luck, and the right opportunities, it might be the start of their glory days. Wait, no, that's Springsteen. What's up, guys? I'm Shane, and please allow me to welcome you to our Monmouth Hawks Prestige Dynasty.
welcome! Okay, I'm always awkward transitioning. If I don't start with my intro, and I'm just picking up after the storyline, I feel like I'm just super awkward as hell, so... Well, there, I just made it even more noticeable. Yeah, so, the Monmouth Hawks. This is a team that I've actually had downloaded for a while. Obviously, I can't connect to the internet, so any team builder team I've had here for a while. This was almost a team I did instead of Casper. So now they're getting shown here. I'm gonna explain some rules here for you. We're gonna make it a little, hopefully, more difficult. And hopefully, I've been trying every single dynasty. I just like, please, I just wanted the last like 10 years without a sim. And we're, we're going 10 years because there's four sim years at the end. So first, let's take a look at recruiting and we'll go over some of the rules. This is going to be a walk-on dynasty, which means I have the worst imaginable players I can have. And the easiest way to do that is to simulate a season, take all of your players, move them over to punter. Kicker or punter, doesn't really matter but put them all over there. This way your team will sign a bunch of walk-on, like randomly generated, like 43 overall players, put them in every other position, and then when you get to cuts, you cut everybody except like whoever your worst overall kicker is gonna be. So I've got a walk-on dynasty, my best player. I think there's a 50 overall quarterback, that's it, that's all I got. Now in doing that simulated year, this team was already pretty garbage, just a team builder that I had. Honestly, could've just played with the first one, probably would've gone 0-12 anyways. The coach didn't get fired. I've actually got two coach points. So I always start off level three. I want to be able to 100% scout these people at the beginning. That's the one thing I ask. Normal coach progression. And we'll go over. I, I don't have the sliders on. I don't have the J-Kid sliders on. Because with Casper, we were getting annihilated. We put up two total touchdowns in the entire first season. I still want to go 0-12. I'm still hoping that's what happens here. I'm still planning on that happening. But for the start... 50-50 sliders, whatever the default is. Heisman difficulty, but 50-50 sliders. And then I'll adjust it if I feel like we're doing too well. So, luckily, the coach has those extra two skill points. So, I'm going to have the extra couple hundred recruiting points. 6-6 six, six overall, I just scouted him. Plus 10 gem. We're not on his board, but I'm hoping we can get him. Because 6-6 six, six overall quarterback. That's what we were getting out of Juco's with year one of Casper. That's what Ovalle was. <laughs> The rules of a prestige dynasty, for anyone who does not know, whatever prestige our school is, so I believe we're a one-star prestige, we can only sign prospects of that caliber. We're a one-star school, we can sign one-star players. Two stars, two-star players, etc., etc. Now, there's a whole formula on how the breakdown is of how they calculate when you get a star rating after the end of each season. If I'm smart, I will post a screenshot of that here from, I believe it's from the Operation Sports Forum, because I believe that's just where all NCAA information comes from at this point. Now, with Casper, we adhere to these rules. Sure, the caveat was, I didn't put limitations on JUCOs, but I signed 14 JUCOs out of my 25. Which is why in year two of Casper, just with the first recruiting class, we went from 0 and 12, and not scoring any points, to eight and five. So I'm going to put a limitation on here. We can only sign five Jucos per recruiting class. And on top of that, I'm going to ban quarterback. We can't sign any Juco quarterbacks at all. I'm just going to ban that here. Now, I'm implementing a couple other rules because, again, it, it's sort of like people who do Pokemon Nuzlocks. you got to put the rules in place. Base rules sometimes aren't challenging enough. Let's keep going. So I didn't feel like Casper was challenging enough. If you're new to the channel, then... Please subscribe, go back and watch the last <laughs> last bit of Casper and you'll see why that series ended and why I'm gonna try and make it even harder this time. You gain a star rating after whatever the rules are that I put up on the screen. If we fail to gain a star rating, which I'm assuming is what's gonna happen this year, because again, assuming 0 and 12, next year, we're, let's assume that we don't get a star rating. We're going to lose 10 scholarships. You have 15 scholarships for next, well, 25, 15 for next season. Each additional season, if I continue to not gain a star rating, I'm going to lose five more. I don't foresee any situation in which I'm going to be running out of scholarships. Like, even if I get to zero scholarships, if I can't get it done by then, or we're just going to quit the series and move on, because obviously I made it too hard. But after the first season two, no more Jucos. We can't sign any more Jucos until we gain another star rating, and it's still going to be five Jucos. I do have, and I'll go over this once we get through to the next week, the best I could do for the newest conference realignment, and I put off recording this entirely because everything hit the fan, and anyone who's a longtime viewer of the channel knows I try and set up the conferences pretty accurately to what they're projected to be. Not what they are right now, but in a couple of years, what they're going to be. This way, it hopefully ages a little bit better. I say this having had two of the last three storylines involve heavily on the Pac-12. 
Oops. Now, my plan here, too, for scouting, just in general, uh, because I've made this mistake with Casper, and I was sort of signing flashy players, and it kind of got a little messy for me and left me with a lot of holes. So I'm just going to go after the 22 starting positions, you know. And then from there, I think I'll be able to get a third wide receiver, a third cornerback, and just one kicker, and they'll pull double duty. Also, going back to these JUCOs, what I'm going to do, for, at least for this first year, I don't want to use them on quarterback. I actually don't want to use them much for skill position. I'm going heavily, and I haven't scouted them yet, JUCO offensive lineman. I'm just going to build my entire offensive line out of JUCO prospects if I can. Because I think, like, Larry Downing starting as a 67. If he's a gem and goes up to a 77, boom, one star right there. If I can solidify my offensive line, it's going to make everything so much easier. And you guys know I love offensive linemen. I'm going to fortify that. Obviously, our coach is Joey Beans Jr. He is an alumni out of Rutgers, so I figured he didn't go that far. He's definitely been hanging out in the Jersey Shore. Now, we're running the Navy offensive playbook because I figured we're terrible. We can't pass the ball. Our wide receivers are pretty quick, though. So we'll be running the option because why not? I'm going to be terrible anyways. Might as well try it. Defense will be standard 4-3. Um, and we're not going to be aggressive whatsoever because blitzing isn't going to help us. I'd rather just have everyone drop back in the coverage. And maybe they'll just, like, get hit in the head with a ball. That's about our only hope. Oh, I lied. Our kicker is a 58 overall. That's our best player. But people who watch Casper, I promised you guys I would bring some of these people over. Hey, if you were expecting them to be good, I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe I didn't make that clear. They're also walk-ons. They're going to be terrible, but at least they'll get some playing time here. So Justice Bagley... Actually, pretty decent speed. 87 speed out of this guy. 66 XL. So, like, it's going to take him about three months to get moving to full speed. But also bringing back Dag Ron Strong Mad. He is slow. I didn't realize this. I didn't change this. 52 speed out of our tight end. I made him 338 pounds, but I don't think they changed the speed skill on that. He's just terrible. But we do have Jason Todd, who is another cut out of Casper. Joshua Sherman coming over because he could not beat out basically Degeneration X, who was our defensive line over there. Also, and I'm just going to shorten this bud because I still can't get it right. So Taz Buckshank will be our right end. By request, Chuck Schilling over here, 44 overall. But he was never going to get playing time on Casper, and he wasn't going to get drafted. So this is probably better. And this is what I'm actually really excited about. Dawson Hall at cornerback. 84 speed, 87 excel. Like, our cornerbacks are pretty quick. I'm going to do all my damage on kick returns, I think. And Dawson Hall is going to be our primary kick returner. And also Kyle King coming over at free safety. 80 speed, 84 excel. Like, these guys, like, secondary's got a little... Okay, strong safety, not so much. We got some speed. All right, as for the schedule for this season, now these, again, we're probably going to get annihilated every single game, and if we don't, then I'm going to change the sliders to make sure we do. Four-minute quarters, except for today, every episode's going to be a doubleheader. We're going to start today, though, with Casper College. Number 13, their team builder was actually pretty good. Also, I don't know who our rivals are. Like, we'll be playing Buffalo in the line war. And we'll also, we will have North Texas and Blackrock on the schedule. I didn't do that on purpose. They were already on the schedule, so I just left them. Okay, so that's, that's hilarious. So uh, I said that, I said that the Mountain West and all that would not have anything to do with us. And Utah is our rival. Well, okay, never mind. They're in the Big Ten anyway. No, 12. Twin? Where'd they go? I can't keep track of it already. Big 12. They're in the Big 12. Okay. So that's who, uh, that's who our rival game is going to be going forward. I'll have to remember that. All right, conference outlook. It looks like they're projecting us to go dead last because our overall is... Huh. All right, 21 overall. We are better than Casper was year one because they were 21, 21, 25. Okay. So, I mean, we're, we're better than Casper was. Hooray. Look at the conferences. And obviously the ACC, they're going to be exactly as they are right now. No changes to them. American's pretty nuts, though. <laughs> they took all of Conference USA. I mean, that's the storyline, but like... The Big 12 now at 16 teams. They're actually, they all slotted in here pretty easily. Because again, 16, that's why I think it's funny. 16 is the max you can have for teams in here. But the Big 10 now has 18 teams, which is, I, I found a workaround, don't worry. So the Big 10 now. Now, two teams that I took out. Again, like I said, Penn State, they're out because I replaced them with BlackRock. I left BlackRock over in the Pac-12 because they've ended up there in every single storyline I've done so far. Might as well just start them there because I need a team over there. And then Rutgers, I moved them to the Independents because they're Rutgers. And they'll probably factor into our storylines coming out like later on down the road. The Mac, basically since UMass left, they have not changed. There was, I think, talks of like Western Kentucky and another team from Conference USA going to the Mac, but nothing happened. Mountain West down to nine teams. Like I said, it's really 
They're only down because we took we kicked out teams to replace with team builder teams. The pack 16, pack six, SEC loaded. It's gonna look exactly like it did with the Casper Dynasty, and the Sun Belt. This is what I think is hilarious. So James Madison got added in. They kicked out FIU for them. First time they're showing up in one of our series, and now the Sun Belt is complete. But without team builder teams, now Conference USA is also down to four teams. So you've got Conference USA and the Pac-12 just clinging to life in this game now. All right, so what I will do real quick, I'm going to look through recruiting. Okay, perfect. We're on his board. Old Dominion didn't run away with him. I want this guy. All right, let's hope for some gems in here. He's a bust. Ooh, there we go. Anyone going after this guy? Nope. You want a scholarship? You can take it. Here's some recruiting points. I'm not rearranging my board because sometimes... If we're clinging to life, they will just take us off the board for no reason. So I'll take him. Offensive lineman, I will just grab five. Like, whoever the best five are. And now, defensive end. Okay, there we go. Uh, ooh. Yes, please. Offer you a scholarship. Bring you in. <laughs> 64 overall. Like, these guys will be monsters for us. I will either go with a 4-3 or a 3-4, depending on who we find that's any good. Okay, we'll go after you... We'll go after you. I don't know what I'm doing at halfback. These guys are terrible. Gotta go after this fullback. I forgot about this guard. Can I get anyone decent at cornerback? Okay, but any of these cornerbacks any good? I mean, that guy's fast. Ooh. Yes. I'll take him. Ooh. Ooh, we got a couple 62s. That's what I'm talking about. And then what I'm going to do is we'll advance a week. We'll get ready for our game. And uh, we'll jump right back into recruiting and see if anything happens. Okay, week one and Michael Brown. Oh, we more than jumped him. Fullbacks, if you don't go after him immediately, you're going to fall off. So I'm going to go ahead. And I use going after this guy. We don't have a chance. They're going They're going all out on that guy. I'm going to go ahead and cut my losses. We can probably go after May here. Uh, tight ends. Ugh. Tight end's gonna be rough, huh? You know what? Let's cut. I mean, we might be able to still get him, but it's okay. Oh, no, Wisconsin found this guy. And Tulane on him. They offered him a scholarship. We're catching him, though. Wisconsin, you don't need any more offensive linemen. Don't do this to me. I'm not giving up on him. I will not give up yet. 64 DN, we got him. Ricky Outlaw. Looks like we might get a little bit of challenge from Texas Tech, maybe. We're going to go hardcore after these two cornerbacks. And basically, as the board keeps shaping out, I'll start kicking people off and going after other positions. I might be risking it by not going after linebackers right now, but I'm also not terribly worried. Oh, man. Again, I didn't help Casper at all. I didn't change anyone. I didn't even go to North Texas and change Gaddy. Which is funny, because Gaddy's supposed to be on Ole Miss right now. In real life, he transferred, but the rosters aren't updated for this coming season. Yeah, uh, this is... um. This is gonna suck. Also, I think it's hilarious now. I didn't realize this until I already committed to doing Monmouth for this dynasty. Three out of our four main series dynasties have been bird mascots. Between the two you see on screen, but also North Texas. They used to be, what, the Golden Eagles or the something Eagles? And they still have an eagle on their helmet. So yeah, three out of the four have been birds. I don't want to play this game. We're gonna die. <laughs> All right, here from Taco John's Field, the opening kickoff. They're going to boot it into the back of the end zone. I'm going to let Hall take it out anyways. That lack of agility is very noticeable. <laughs> hmm, this ain't that bad. We'll go with the read option. We'll ease our way in for our first play. All right, we pick up three. Let's go for a pass play here. We'll go for some curls. Hmm. Very quickly, I've decided this play is not going to work. But also, my players are very terrible. <laughs> I, so R1 was running up, and if I had like a quarterback who actually had an arm, that could have been a play. But I don't have that. And I, for some reason, forgot. I'm going to do it. You're going to see me make a lot of dumb plays entirely because I'm going to forget how terrible this team is. Like right there. 
I had an X coming over. If that was Barry Allen scrambling out, that would have been an easy first down. Also, my guy's a lefty. I didn't know that. I was actually going to intentionally give myself a lefty quarterback, forgot to do it, and the game remembered that for some reason. So that, how, what, what, what happened? Thank you. We recovered a fumble. We got a turnover. Okay. Go for the option play. This is the best field position we might have all season. How do I pitch again? I ask this every time. We'll figure it out. I don't have to. Oh, my God. Look at him clear the way. Look at how broken the option offense is. I was tempted to throw Hall in at quarterback. But um, I decided that even though that worked well for Casper, I didn't want to do that. I, I wanted it to suck. Oh my god, I didn't have time to pitch it. That would have been a wide open pitch. I just didn't have time. Full back option. What? I don't know what any of this means. This seems like something where, like, I need to have more brain cells than I do. Oh, right. Lefty quarterback. Righty quarterback. Uh, well, he's not hurt, so maybe we'll get a righty quarterback now. A righty quarterback. I had a wide open uh, triangle. I underthrew that one. Obviously. Well, you know what? We were just going to punt it anyways on that. It's cool. Now, will man defense be a mistake? It's hard to tell because it's all going to be a mistake. But Chuck Schilling getting the first tackle in Monmouth history. Whoa, well, okay. I mean, we're playing better than I thought. And again, just like we've been doing... There's a mercy rule in place for this season where if we're down by four scores, that's it. We're just going to super sim out the game. I blew my coverage on that. You, you didn't even look to your right. I mean, realistically, a, a 3 nothing lead is probably insurmountable, but I figure 28 nothing. that's 100% not going to get us get it done. And that gave us, like, we mostly got to play all the first halves. Oh, God. Well, that didn't work out. He's gone. Oh, wow. Number 40. Who's that? Small. I'm not going to remember most of your names because there's only like six named players here. But he managed to dive and get his ankles and take him down. Mm. Well, he tried. And that's all that we can ask. Okay, so I had the fullback back there and ran into him. But that triple option picks up eight yards. They, um... I think if I was more experienced with the triple option, maybe I could have gotten a first down out of that. But I, I think I think I'm going to figure out this triple option by the end of the season. That's sort of what I'm going for here. I'm like, I, we're going to suck. I might as well try and figure out a playbook. Because I might have to run this next year, too. Because, like, it's, it's the best way to pick up chunk plays if your team sucks. Now, I don't know how to fix the defense if the team sucks. So I'm just going to have to try and score every single drive. That's going to be our most immediate way to gain success. Okay, good. I tricked him into stepping out of bounds. What playbook are they running? I have no idea. Uh, there's a horse collar, but I think they just call that a face mask. Yeah, okay. There we go. Chuck Schilling helped meet them. He didn't get credit for the tackle or anything, but I mean, you know. We took his average down. It's only 14 and a half now. Well, we were screwed on that one. Oh, we do portion out of bounds, though. Who's that? Is that small again? There we go. I got the assist on that one. Beautifully defended on that. You can't run the triple option on us. We run the triple option. Austin, run a spy. It's not going to help. You're not going to be able to catch that guy. But I'll feel better about myself. Defense gets a goal line stand. I don't know if they're just going to go for it. They probably should. They'll just march into the end zone. Yep, they're going to go for it. Okay, we're playing. This is what I wanted, though. It's like, okay, 50-50 sliders. We're a little more competitive. 
We'll go to J Kits next season, and then from there, if it starts getting easier, we'll try and find some way to ramp it up, I guess. Oh, we're almost at the end of the half. I'm like, why are we two o'clock? I forgot it's four minute quarters. Chilling's the last hope. Oh, no. Chuck Schilling, he was the last hope. I had a read on it, but I think I have 52 speed, so there was no way in hell. Okay, he knows my weakness is when they kick it to the right side of the screen. Oh, I thought I had blocks set up there, but that guy just ran through 46. This is the four verts we got. Okay, we don't we don't come out of shotgun in this playbook, I guess. Oh my god, what a beautiful pass there. How did we manage that one? <laughs> Try a slip screen. Maybe maybe we'll catch him. No, because I'm gonna I'm gonna run right into Cosby right here, aren't I? No, he got tackled by my he got he got tackled by his own teammate. Okay. Oh my god, Stratton again. He's just eating them up. I gotta remember we got 50-50 sliders, like we can we can try some stuff here. Oh, he stopped running. Alright, I would appreciate if you guys don't cover Dennis over there. Oh! I had R1, but that got tipped at the line. Bagley's not even out here. There we go, Jones on the seam though. Take, take another timeout. We got one more. I don't know if we can make an extra point with the sliders. Like, that's... We're playing with easier sliders because we were J-Kits from the start before. So we might be able to manage an extra point. I'm not sure. Justice Bagley out here. Justice Bagley in for the first touchdown in Hawks history. All right, that was a nice little drive we put together there. I'm gonna try the PAT. I wanna see if we can do it. We can, we can make a PAT with a 58 overall kicker. I'm gonna have to change the sliders. And in the first half, we're only down 14-7 at number 12 Casper College. <laughs> we got stiff arm, but uh, we slowed him down enough to let someone else get the tackle, so I'll take it. Come on, Schilling. There we go, getting a tackle. Schilling's having himself a day. I don't think he's getting half the tackles I'm going for, but he's in position as well as he can be. Oh, they barely got it. I got blocked, but in, like, perfect position to stop him. That almost worked out. All right, a couple other things for anyone who's new to the channel here. So, throughout the seasons, what we will do at the end of every year, we will give out what's called the Deshaun Gaddy Award to whatever low overall player we have who really makes an impact for it. Not even low overall, just if we have whoever's our best player, basically. It's like the team MVP. But their training results, let's say they only get like a plus three in the offseason, even though their on-field performance was well worth it. From what I've seen in general, the oh my god, they're playing with a weird formation. Oh my god, I can't even see him over R1. <laughs> that sucked. But from what I've seen, the average, like the top, like training result you will get is a plus seven. So if the player deserves the award, instead of that plus three, what I'll do once we get to the regular season and I can add, or the preseason I can add players, I will bump them up to a plus seven training result. So I'll give him four overall if, if he gets a plus three. Give him another four points, however many points he needs to get to get uh, another plus four to his overall. Nope. Ah! Okay, we got him to stumble out of bounds. So what we will do in a season, it doesn't have to be our team, whoever does. The winner of the Heisman, if they are not a senior, if they are an underclassman in any way, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior. Because they are the best player in college football, their attributes should reflect that. Nope. So whoever wins the Heisman, and you just saw it at the end of Casper, I will make them a 99 overall. Every single relevant stat to them across the board will be a 99. I say relevant because if we have a halfback win like we did last year, I don't need to improve his tackle stat. That's not important. 
So it will be a benefit to us to force feed the ball to one player or whatever. Makes me root extra hard for a Heisman winner. Okay. So they're marching down the field. We're probably not getting a stop here. But we're playing well enough, and because the quarters are short, we might not get Mercy Rules. This is about to be a long episode. <laughs> I thought it, I thought this game would be over by now. But I forgot I, I just put it on 50-50 sliders. All the penalties are from the J-Kit sliders, so like the 91 for holding 91 for face mask, all that stuff. Oh, there he goes. So all that stuff is set, but like it's just 50-50 on the sliders for catching and blocking and all that stuff. Oh, Hall, this is it. This is going to be the best best shot of the kick return we've had all day, except we got no blocks whatsoever. I don't think he's made it to the 20 yet. I'm really hoping if we give out the Deshaun Caddy Award in this first season, it goes to a named player so they can have some relevance later on. But uh, Stratton is having himself a day. <laughs> it's like the idea that I'm running the Navy playbook. And I'm still just like, yeah, I'm just going to pass the ball anyways. Oh, that's a glitch play. That was fun. I'm not going to be running the Navy playbook for the entirety of this series. Just these first couple of years. I think what stinks is like, we have terrible offensive linemen because we have terrible everything. But every single play is from under center. Oh, Circle dusted his man. And we missed him. Let's punch it. So I think what I'll do after I'm done recording this episode is I'm going to go back to the first episode of Black Rock because there was a set of sliders I used in that. that were I think they called them the Sim Sliders. I forget exactly the name. So they're still worse than 50-50. But they're not as bad as the J-Kit Sliders. So instead of 50-50, I might go for those for this season. And then next year go for J-Kids. I think that might be what I do. Because I, I... Okay, well... That's a touchdown. Like, I feel like we're doing okay in this game. Like, we sh we're doing better than we should. Maybe I'll just leave him 50-50. Maybe I'll just do that. Because we're, no we're now down by three scores. And we're, we're, like, we're actually doing stuff on offense. Like, we put up points on Casper. We don't play in FCS school this year. I intentionally did that. Like, we got Bama instead. But, like, I kick returns. Okay, well, there we go. They're 19 yards there. He got, it was a short kick, and he went down hurt. So that's not good. But, I, I, yeah, okay, you know what? 28-7 is a lot more entertaining than if it was, like, 65-3. to Which I feel like was what a lot of games were. Like, they're bringing all these blitzes. They think we're still going to be running it. We're in the pistol this time, so I can let Stratton set. Oh, Stratton's gone. Oh, 24 was actually... That was a QB accuracy thing, actually, because that was a seam. He was going to turn in a little bit more, and we just do it straight. I might mess around with the slide. Not the sliders, the um, the audibles, too. Oh, there we go. There's, there's me having a lefty quarterback coming into play right there. Yeah, all right. Maybe I'll just leave it at 50-50. We had a good two-minute drive in there. That's the highlight of the game for us, and I think that'll be just about all we get. I held on to that ball too long. Fourth and 30. Coach is probably going to be like, go for it. No, we got we to gotta punt that one. That's it. Yeah, we punted it. They're starting from their own side of the field. They got two clock going. This one's over. But, I mean, Chuck Schilling got a tackle. He set up too long. It wasn't a TFL, but five tackles and one TFL today for him. This guy has 197 rushing yards. Like, congratulations. Mild concussion for Hall. He's out for the game. That's all right. The game's almost over anyways. We might have accidentally put this guy on the Heisman watch. With a game on four-minute quarters, and he's annihilating us. Does that, that looked like a face mask, but Schilling picking up tackle number six. And I think they're going to chew it out. We did it! We didn't get mercy ruled! That's a victory. I mean, it's not a victory at all. Well, at least we didn't have to wait like five games to score our first touchdown. He had 223 yards on the ground today. Or 223 yards total. I don't know if he got a pass in there, too. He's going to win player of the game. 217 yards on 20 carries, two touchdowns. Yep, put that man on the Heisman list. All right, stats on today. Williams, 6 of 14, 94 yards, a touchdown, no picks. 
That was Reese who threw the pick. Took three sacks, 42% completion percentage. Like, not good, but I mean, I'll, I'll take that. Negative 12 yards on the ground. One carry for eight yards. Negative 12 yards, and we had an, a long of 11. Like, we actually... It, it could have been okay. Stratton, three catches, 72 yards. Yeah, he was, he was killing it today. Jones had one for 20. Those were both full... Uh, they weren't playing tight end. I thought they were playing tight end. This playbook's going to be weird. Bagley had one for five in the first touchdown in program history, and Kazi had a terrible screen. Bauman gave up both of those sacks. His original name was Bowser, but I decided no one on this team deserved to have Bowser as the last name, so I changed it. Meyer led a team with six tackles. Schilling right there also was six, and then five for Small. Small Meyer Schilling getting TFLs. No sacks, no picks. There was a forced fumble somewhere. It was by Small. Forced it and recovered it. Reese, our quarterback, is playing punter right now. Why is our quarterback playing punter? I gotta put Hayes in there. That's hilarious, though. Hey, hey, you know what? It's not terrible. Like, he averaged 39, net average of 34.7. That's not bad. And Hall, 5 for 90 on kick returns. Not great. Probably not winning the Jet Awards this year, but maybe he'll be on the list. And now, before we wrap this one up, once again, I'm going to do this to you guys and hide it at the end. Anyone who wants to name a prospect or a recruit that we're going to be having in the upcoming seasons... I'm going to do it differently than I've done it in the past. I keep trying to change it because I keep trying to find a system where everyone who suggests a name gets it, but I don't I, like, I'm just trying to keep it fair. So instead of taking your names in each episode, if you, if you leave a name suggestion down in the comment section below, I'm not going to like it. I'm not going to reply to it. I'm just going to leave it. And when you see my lack of response, hopefully it reminds you that this is not how we're going to do it this time. Because the spreadsheet, after I wrapped up Casper, I think there were still like 50 some odd names on there that never actually got into it. Like, I went through and did the oldest ones first for that last recruiting class, and it only caught me up with, I think, the first three seasons worth of recruit names I got suggested. So, I'm not going to keep a running spreadsheet this time. Instead, what I'm going to do, at the end of each season, I try and bulk record. I'm on vacation this week. I'm going to try and have almost all of season one recorded before you see an episode. Once I'm done bulk recording a season and I'm at the end and I have my recruit signed and everything and we're in that preseason, I'm going to put up a post on the community tab. Those of you who don't know, you can go onto my channel. There's a tab that says community. It'll have all my posts. I put pictures up up there. I put a lot of polls up there for you guys getting your opinions on stuff. And basically, every time I put a poll up, it's just you guys telling me, no, you, don't, you still don't want to see Madden on this channel. And I will post on there when I'm done recording. Hey guys, just finished wrapping up the next season. I have these recruits. And I will put it up there. And basically if I got 25 players, first come, first serve. Once I hit 25, I'm basically just going to delete that post. Or I'll put like, I'll pin a comment and say like, hey, name uh, submissions are closed. So first come, first serve. If you have an active player, and I'm going to do my best to keep tabs on this. If you have an active player already with me who is not, like, not graduated, if they haven't seen the field, you're not going to be eligible to get another player until that player graduates. I'm going to keep that going. I'm not going to change anyone's overalls. I'm not going to change their height and weight. I thought I said that last... I did say that last time and I changed my mind. Change Isaac Yankum. He became an absolute unstoppable monster because I made him seven feet tall at D-line and he was just sacking everything that got near him. So I won't change any of that, like jersey numbers, equipment, any of that kind of stuff. Fine, I like that, I don't have a problem with, but it'll be just name suggestions, and it'll be limited to whatever positions are in the recruiting class. So if you want a quarterback, but someone above you already requested the quarterback name, you gotta pick a different position. And I figure that keeps it fair. It doesn't put it behind a paywall, because I don't want to do that. I don't want to start doing channel members just to name recruits. First off, I don't want to ask you guys for money when I can't be consistent with my uploads at the moment. And second off, I don't have a big enough channel. I understand why, like, people with 100,000 plus subscribers have to do it, because at a certain point, you put a post up, you'll probably get 25 comments in three seconds. So I'm not at the point where I want to put it behind a paywall yet. I don't ever necessarily want to, but if I have to, that's what I will do. But it puts it where, like, it's going to be people who will, like, only the people who see those community tabs. Uh, in order to get those, I forget if they disable that. I think you have to go into your subscription settings 
Yeah, so I'm looking at this on mobile right now, but you can scroll through and it'll say under here, like, if you're in a subscription fee, all today, live, continue watching. All the way at the end, there's a blue thing that says settings, and you can change it to videos and posts, or you can just click the tab that just says posts. I'm not sure on desktop how that works. I'm not on my desktop right now. I can't check it for you, but you'll have to make sure you have it enabled to be able to see posts. But that's where the recruit submission names, like, that's where you will have it. So, again, hiding at the end just for you guys. But that is where we're going to wrap it up. Next episode, we will start the double headers. We'll keep it on 50-50 sliders for now. And if it starts, if we start having an easier time with some easier opponents, I think we have black, oh no, who do we have? We got North Texas and TCU, I believe, in the next episode. North Texas is trash. So if we're actually keeping up or even winning against North Texas, because they're 83 overall, we should still be getting annihilated by them. If we're keeping up with them pretty well, then that's what I'll change the sliders down. But if we can just keep it close, I'm okay. Like, if we go, like, 1-11 or something this year, like, I'm, I'm okay with that. I don't... It's not a failure if I don't go 0-12. I'm just mentally prepared to go 0-12 because I figure that's where we should be as a 21 overall school or 22 or whatever we are. But for now, that'll wrap up this episode. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please be sure to hit like down below. If you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell to get it delivered directly to your inbox every single time I upload. Any thoughts, suggestions, whatever you may have, leave it all down in the comment section below. Everything you leave down there, I will always respond to, unless you are the trolliest of trolls. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Shane. I'm out.